September 2020. And that's what we're talking about today. I think we should get to it. Let's roll. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela O'Hare, your favorite Las Vegas realtor. And I'm Rob Howe, the rock star realtor. And welcome to our monthly market update for October 2020. And in this issue, we will be going over September 2020 numbers. Yes, we will. Some interesting things happened last month. So can you guess what? The market was on fire again for another month. So how many months in a row is that? June, July, August, September? Yeah. Four months? Four months of fire. Fire it is on fire. Yep. And so we had actually a very good month. I mean, really, I mean, super duper excellent month. And we hope that October will be the same. I think it's going to be similar. I, that's my guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're going to stay strong, I think. And that strength is created, obviously, from having not enough inventory. inventory right. right. So last month in September, there were 3,270 single family homes that sold. And that is up from the month before, because in August, how much is it up, Rob? It's up 12.4%. 12.4% and so in August it was at about 2,900, 2,910 to be exact. So being up in sales is actually pretty good and unexpected. Yeah, well, I mean, no, I think we expected, you know. Well, we kind of expected it to be the same thing as it was in August where, yes. Some strength. Some strength, but right. not um, as strength. Strong. Not as robust, yeah. Right. It, I mean, it, it's obviously because of our low inventory that we're seeing that. But also I think some of the sellers that can sell have gotten a little bit of the message you know the message is out that it's maybe time to get your property on the market right now if you've been thinking of that so some people are doing that and that is allowing for more purchases because there are buyers waiting for your property right and this is also up 18.9 percent from september 2019 so that's actually huge to be up from 2019. so that brings us to the median sales price and back in August, we were at 335,000 and we jumped again for four months in a row to 337,250. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. The, the median, median home sales price. Median. So that's uh, up 0.7% mm -hmm. from the month before and up actually 8.8% from the prior year. So that's again, huge. We just keep on going up. Yes. This is actually what we want to see. Now, normally, I, I think I'm somebody who wants to stay within relative spaces so that we're not going up and pricing buyers out of the market. But here's the thing. I think this is really good because if you were to be concerned about next year having a little bit of a flattening out, we might only give back what we've gained. And I think that would be really, really wonderful to see. So if there's more inventory on the market next year and, this, and the sellers can't really, you know, expect buyers to fight like they are right now, and the price is sort of, you know, right. stay It'll be more a balancing act. It's, it's like exactly. half a six a dozen or the other, however that expression goes. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. Yeah. yeah, so basically that's what I think is happening. And I, I also have this thought that if... If you were told that we were going to have this big, uh, you know, C word happening in 2020 and all the craziness that that brings, but we would end up having 2020 and 2021 basically be flat, like we, we didn't change from 2019 to 2022, wouldn't you think that would be a, a pretty fair outcome to, yeah. to, to not be like, that's what I think we're looking at. I think we're looking at... We actually gained in 2020, which is just really hard to believe, but it's true, and there's a lot of good reasons for that. But if we lose a little in 2021, right. we'll actually have been flat for the last two years, and I think that's a best case scenario. I really, I really hope that's the exactly. case. Exactly, I mean, I think for the rest of this year, our median sales price will continue to rise, and then by next year, like Rob is saying, may go down and everything will just all balance out for the two-year average i guess yeah yeah to say. yeah exactly that's what i'm that's what i'm thinking and there are some you know caveats to that there could be actually improvement that happens i mean depending on how many people continue to come here from out of state 
and those types of things. There's so to, many unpredictabilities that we right. can't Un it's predict. All, it's unpredictable. But how how quickly do we come back, Ange? How qu how strong does Vegas come back? Now I think we're, it's going to take time. I really do. Th I don't think there's any way to really rush the intense impact that it that that, that this year's had. So I do think that that's the reason why we're going to see sort of a you know that evening a balancing out. out. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, even though we gained such momentum. It'll d and then people were saying, oh, you lost 20% in 2021. But yeah, but just look how much is inflated now. So in the end, it's going to just be back yeah. to where it was. So it's just really... Yeah, I hope it's, it's not toss. 20%. I hope it's like, you know, I think this year is going to be around a 10% gain. And then next year, maybe we have a 10% loss right. over the year. But here's the thing that for you buyers, that really, that really strikes a nice little chord in my mind. Because it says ring it's time to buy and you might actually be able to go out there and dictate some terms to sellers if they're all coming on the market at the same time which i actually think once we get comfortable that may be happening we'll see some more properties on the market for several reasons so which brings us to the luxury market for last month and the luxury market was on fire as well okay yes. There were 87 homes that sold last month in the luxury market compared to August numbers of 64. That's a 23 home difference. Yeah, and then strong. the median, yeah, very strong. And the median price went from 1.35 mil to 1.45 mil, which is a hundred thousand dollar increase in median price in the luxury market. And when I looked, the average actually was at 1.8 million. But you know, obviously we go through median price because there's some homes that are 10 point some million and some are just a million. So right. I took the medium medium of that. And that's actually a great thing that's happening there. I think what we're seeing is that some of the properties in the luxury market that were kind of hanging around for a while, they're getting sold. Right. And some of those sellers are maybe loosening up a little bit on their price and uh, finally saying, you know what, I want to, I do want to sell right now. So they're maybe a little bit more nervous Nelly and they're saying, you know what, I want to sell. But these buyers that are coming in have come from other markets where they sold their properties for quite a bit more. So they're coming in and right. buying a fantastic property in Vegas for less than what they spent by a lot in some of the places they're coming from. So that's really an encouraging factor. I think yeah. we're getting we're getting some some new money in town and that's great. And it's all what we've noticed mostly cash deals, very few yeah. loan deals, but the highest price home that sold last month we went over this in our the robin and real estate show was in the ridges mm -hmm. and it sold for 10.15 mil and had a listing price of 15.999 and it was on the market for 432 days there that goes to show right i right. mean that's just one example and we see um, we see a lot of those examples the luxury home market takes a little longer to sell on in some instances in some instances we did have one that we featured sold zero we, days yeah <laughs> bam just <laughs> sold right away but uh that is what you generally see that but i think that it's great that we're seeing some movement in that market and we're probably going to continue to see so, uh, movement in that sure. marketplace. I mean, it's like I said, you're not, you don't, you're not going to have tons of numbers coming from there. There's only really so much luxury inventory, and there's really only so much that's going to move it at right. any given time. But I think that's a really good thing for the market. Exactly. I mean, 23 home increase is huge for the luxury side. So for September, we had a total of 3,851 new listings, which is down 0.9 percent from August but up 9.3% from the prior year, which is actually another record-breaking number. Yeah. Well, there you go. That, uh, what, the, what does that tell us, Rob? <laughs> that, <laughs> that tell us, again, that the, the people are getting the message to some degree. We're having, uh, welcome to 2020, where everything's a little bit backwards and off kilter, you know? Right. So normally you would see a slowdown at this time of year where people don't really want to start keep uh, putting their properties on the market. But I think people are getting the message that maybe now is a very good time to do so. And so we're seeing a little bit more increase there. Yeah. And people are finally starting to get the message, but not as much as we would like it. Because if we had more homes on the market, then these yeah. numbers would actually be a lot higher. Yeah. Well, I don't know if the median price would increase. However, I know that the number of listings sold would increase. Yeah. There, there's buyers waiting for good properties right now. And I, I mean, that's kind of even my advice to my buyers is like, let's get ready and just have it in, you know, have that thing, you know, ready to go. It's in the chamber. Right. As soon as we know, boom, we're going to fire our, 
our, our webbing, our netting, and we're going to capture that property and, and make sure uh, we get it in our hands. Um, I think there's a lot of buyers doing that right now. They're just waiting. And they're not just waiting. Also, yeah, too, but there's just nothing out there for yeah. a lot of my clients. I have, a, I mean, I can count about 10 clients that just cannot find anything right now because they're not moving ready. They're not updated. There's just a lot of outdated houses out well, there. Well, yeah, and that is something that happens this time of year traditionally anyways is you're going to have more of the junk properties on the market. Right. You know, the ones that have been hanging around that didn't quite sell through the summer, um, which aren't our listings, <laughs> never are our <laughs> listings, okay? Remember that because it's true. Um, we put properties on the market to sell them as quickly as possible for the most money. That's really what your, your goal is. Right. And if you do that right, it's not going to be hanging around long. Um, and a good plan, no matter what kind of property, will make that happen. Exactly. So there were a total number of 4,798 single family homes listed without offers for the month of September, which is up 3.4% from August and down 34.6% from the prior year. So we're down 34.6% from the prior year when it comes to houses being listed without offers. So our inventory is very anemic because yeah. we don't have enough inventory and half of that or at least oh yes <laughs> 500 of that or a thousand of that is rental property yes so we have uh, uh, we have this inventory and it looks like we have so long uh, 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 so much inventory but really there's a little hidden number in there and that is those tenant occupied listings that are really just not moving and they they until now we have some Good news. Good news. We yes. we actually have some news in the news. That's actually for our, <laughs> our show usually, but we're going to throw this in there because it's important news right. for an update. The update is we can now show tenant occupied property. Woo! All right. The governor's allowing Woo! that here. And, and mm -hmm. sellers can and have open houses you now. You can now have your open houses, obviously with guidelines in place. But those two things, with guidelines in place, you can do those two things now. The uh, caveat to that is that the tenants still are under our eviction moratorium. Right. And that's in the state and potentially something that might be actually federal. So that's kind of got to all get sorted out. And I think, you know, if you don't have a tenant that wants to cooperate, well, you're going to be up you know what creek right now right. for that so exactly those tenant occupied properties they are not selling they they have a hard time being sold so you've got a lot more this year than last year a lot like three times as many if not more that are that were on the market last year than this year and so that is a little filler for our inventory right. it's a stuffing in there that makes it look like we have a little bit more than we do which brings us to the months of supply it went down just a hair from 1.6 to 1.5 months of supply, which is down 8% from August, but down 45% from the prior year. Yeah. So last year, this time, obviously, we almost had double months of supply. I think it was usually hovering around the 2.1, 2.2 last year, when I, if I could remember correctly. So 1.5 yeah. is not a lot of inventory, and if we factor in the tenant occupied. Um, homes lop off a half a percent. Yeah, exactly. So You've it's got probably one month of inventory. One month of inventory, and which I, is not a lot. Yeah, that's not a lot, and and it, it it makes sense that we're cutting down because we had a strong month last no month, and we moved a lot of the inventory. So, right. you know, we're we're seeing that trend continue. It's another reason why I think through the end of the year, with these things that are in place, we're going to continue to see buyers struggling to find properties, and that will create a what a uh, value wise is a strong market you know not necessarily uh, a good strong market but a strong market yeah nevertheless. not volume not volume of right. sales but definitely uh, the the price of those properties and what they're selling at and basically you know if you're in a good situation and you're thinking about buying you should be looking for your opportunity right now because if you're feeling stable you know and you can get that awesome interest rate you know and you can get into a home and that that's what you really need to be doing especially if you're paying rent or your your option is going to be that i have to go get another rental right i mean there's rent no is crazy here in vegas yeah there's no choice in my in my mind the, the only problem you have is finding your property but even rentals are hard to find the rentals are insane right now it's insane to find these properties because yep. what's happening is that you have the, the renters that are staying in the properties that so can't get evicted. The, the normally would come on market and you'd have a little bit more availability. But so the ones that are coming on, 
the the landlords know that they can be a little bit more strict with their with what they want. They're going to get multiple their applications, yeah. and they're going to ask they're for they're a little be bit very more. Picky. So you know that's not that's not a pleasing territory to be in. And then hey, guess what? After a year, you can be told that you leave again, and now you got to do this all over again. I mean, that's nightmare city. Yeah. So. Why pay someone else's mortgage when you can be paying for your own? Yeah. I rented for three years and I just, I had to. And if you calculate 2,500 times 12, that's a lot of friggin' money that was going to someone else's mortgage and not mine. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and you look at price for what you're going to pay for a property versus what you're renting. I mean, it's just a no brainer. If you can do it, you got to get it going. Right. And, you know, to be in a stable market, you have to have six months of housing supply so obviously we're still in a seller's market however as a buyer doesn't mean you still can't get a good deal because there are some homes that are still hanging around yeah um, hanging, around. hanging around past the 30-day mark that probably because they're overpriced they may need some little work or they're just completely just dumps however was, if I was a buyer, those are the homes I want to be looking for or looking at because at, at least consider yeah, yeah consider because that gives me a lot more negotiation power to negotiate closing costs. Maybe also negotiate down in price. Yeah. So there's a lot of um, factors to consider when you're buying a home that's been on the market for past 30 days or yeah. even like the 20 day mark because typically the first two weeks is the most. Yeah. Um, it's on and off if it's yeah, great. Right? Yeah. It, the first two weeks is the most crucial time of the listing and it should sell within the first two weeks yeah, that's and our goal for yeah. sure oh, yeah and then once it's past two weeks it becomes starts to become a stale listing so um, yeah. and that's when sellers get antsy and they're ready to just sometimes give away the farm yeah certainly after the, after certain t periods of time you know so a lot of a lot of different measurements there in there but uh, fairly simple fairly yep. simple stuff and uh, pretty easy to read through especially if you have some uh, professionals like uh, Ange or myself right <laughs> those 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 types of people really know how to help you get a property. 69% of the closings was on the market in September for 30 days or less. In August, that number was 61.3. And in September 2019, that number was 53.9% of the homes were on the market for 30 days or less. So it seems like now the homes are selling faster, 69%. It, it jumped up from 61 to 69%. The fly bothering you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shoe fly, shoe fly. So that's pretty good that the houses are selling faster uh, once they go on the market. Oh yeah, if you got a great property, it's going right. boom. I remember in 2018, that number was always like 80%, 80 to 85%. So um, it's creeping up there that the homes are selling fast Yeah, the normal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, you still, I think buyers are still kind of like, they're not like uh, frenzy state right now where they just well no it's cooled off I think now yeah yeah there's they're not in that frenzy state which is is a good place to be because you're not uh, doing things emotionally too much here you know you're taking your time to think about it and if you're getting counseled right you're gonna you know not base your decisions too emotionally and you're gonna take your time to to put together the right offer right and really check out what what's there but also know when you need to move so Buyers are kind of being a little bit more responsible, I think. They're right. not uh, And I think, um, I actually think November numbers are going to be fairly strong just because of, I always base this stuff on how busy I am and you know how <laughs> my days get booked. But right. I think November is going to be very strong because people actually still want to buy before the whole election thing. So I think because they're buying in October, they want to buy before you know the elections so that's why I feel that November is also still going to be a strong month with numbers yeah yeah uh, I, th I think so too I think it, it's not just I mean elections happen to follow fall around all the right before all the holidays as well true this year is going to be a little different when it comes to the holidays I right. think it's not quite as uh, but then again I think people might be trying to get back to some normalcy so We'll see. That's a little another little hard to tell how yes. that will happen. In, yeah, in, we don't know in people's personal lives. Is there going to be a vaccine? Yeah, we I don't know. So those things get out of the way when we when we get uh, through November at the beginning of November, and we start to see our people getting comfortable with the, the what's ha been happening. Is there a vaccine? Um, all those things. Uh, there's a number of measurements, a number of marker downs that I think are going to really you know. That sets the tone for what's coming next. Yeah, we really need for 2020 to be over. 
have the cure or have the vaccine so we can <laughs> just say bye. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's funny is because we don't know how the Las Vegas Strip's going to be for New Year's, but if they find a vaccine before that, I mean, people are going to be wanting to friggin' party, right? Yeah, like these flies. They're going to be all over that party. <laughs> yeah, I feel like a party right now with these flies. <laughs> but you know what? This is what I'm going to say. I'm going to just say. give a little word of encouragement that I hope that you've made 2020 the best that you possibly can. I hope that you've found your opportunity in this year. Because I know that Ange and I have, we've, we actually met each other this year and we decided to start talking about real estate together and things that I think have been, uh, s we've had a symbiotic relationship where we really enjoy that. And that's just one of a number of things that have improved in our lives. Right. Even in the craziest year of everyone's lives, I think that it's really important to focus on what has been positive and how you can control you and what you right. can do. Because the more that you take care of yourself, the more that you take care of the people that you love around you and do those things, whatever's going on, what all the other noise that's going on around in the world, I think will, will die away basically and you can handle whatever comes at you. Exactly. So, it's good words of wisdom. Yeah. I mean, unless it's a meteor and then we're all screwed. <laughs> yeah. Like the I dinosaurs, so. we will go bye-bye. But hey, there's some things you can't control. So what can you control? You can sell your house right now. You can control that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, man. <laughs> she's just right on. <laughs> she's right on with the sales pitch. No. <laughs> yes. Control the positivity in your life. Absolutely. You Absolutely. can control it. Absolutely. You can get, get rid of the negative energy and the negative people that are in your life and only bring in positive people. That's right. And I mean, that at some point you start repelling them. Right. It's, and a, you know, it's a weird thing. It's you a whole karmic thing where you put it out in the universe and it'll come back at you. Tenfold. Absolutely. We are, uh, we are believers in the universe <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, actually the housing, the selling houses made me realize that. Yeah. You know, it made me realize. <laughs> oh, you said the C word. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Yes, but yeah. the C word kind of helped you in a way, kind of. Yeah, you oh, had absolutely. An epiphany, epiphany. I, this year has been the, one of the most transforming years of my life. I feel like a a, a rose that that really bloomed, bloomed. and you know, uh, a butterfly. Yeah, that a butterfly that's cocoon. coming out of the cocoon. Uh, I, my life has been great for many years, but really, I didn't know that there would be new levels. So I just. I can I can only tell you that I think there's even more for myself and for anyone else that might be in this situation. Just one little step at a time yep. to greatness. Follow the signs, read the signs. Yep, absolutely. I read this book called The Celestial Prophecy years ago, and it always says that every person that you make eye contact with has a message for you. Are you going to interpret that message? Or are you going to read that message? Or how yep. are you going to read that message? How are you seeing the world? Your perception that you're seeing things really, really does matter. So feed yourself well right. mentally and physically. Mm -hmm. And I think that mo many more things, just one little step into that at a time, one little baby step into that at a time will be massive for you. And I was going to say that, that being in the housing market, being, uh, uh, yeah. being somebody that helps people find their homes, mm -hmm. it is no lie when I say this, that 100% of the time, people are where they belong when it all is said and done. I mean, I've had people cry because they didn't get that property that they wanted so bad. They just fell in love with it. Right. We couldn't get it done. Seller didn't accept the offer. Somebody beat us out, whatever. And then t they turn around a, a little while later and they say, thank the Lord and Jesus <laughs> that I didn't get that home because right? we found the absolute right one for them exactly. shortly thereafter. And so, you know, you always have to put things into perspective. I'm just telling you, it's not even a joke. 100% of the time, that's the way it works out. And uh, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I don't think so, but that's the way I like to view the world and exactly. and, and being involved in really what is probably the m most important p thing of people's lives. Right. Home has, is where the heart is. And ha yeah. It, it, it just, it is a gift that keeps giving. I'm, I just think we're blessed to be in this business right. and actually to have a uh, proclivity to it, to have a, a, a talent to be able to, to be in this business is, uh, is pretty special. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, if you would like to download the full report provided by the Las Vegas Realtors, I posted a link down in the description below. As always, if you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment down below, share with a friend, and come on, subscribe to my channel, 
and smash Rob's it. channel, but smash this channel first. Yeah, <laughs> find me. Yeah, and, and then find, find Rob. Ange and, uh, Rob and, and Ange, Ange Real, Real Estate. Estate Show. Yes, that's an awesome channel. I'll leave a link down in the description below for that one as well. We're giving so much content. I know. I mean, really, either people are just like sick, sick of, of us, us or they absolutely <laughs> love us. Find Let your us way. Let us know in the comments what you think of us. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on the next one. And if you made it this far, Please comment, because I want to know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But You're maybe awesome. we'll have some bloopers at the end, too. Maybe. That's right. You're awesome. But see you on the next one. Rock on. But do it peacefully.